And just a perfect night for football, Kate, here in Hamilton as we get set for round two of four between the Argos and Ticats. Six days after Toronto came back in the second half at home at BMO Field to win that one 34 to 20. Well, we talked a lot about Brandon Banks last week, Matt, facing his old team for the first time. The emotions continue back in his old building for the first time tonight. Yeah, and it's uh, it's hard to believe and it's difficult to see him in another uniform when you hear Tim Hortons field. But Brandon Banks is that type of player that can make a difference. And admittedly, McLeod Bethel Thompson, you see in the set frame there with Speedy B, he says they're not on the same page, page yet. And they've been working really hard to get there because he knows what a valuable player that could be in his lineup. And Matthew Schiltz played a lot of talk about this guy. Five years in the league now. He's only had five starts. He's the six tonight. And uh, he's very athletic. We understand that. We're going to get a good look at him tonight, see what he's got to do, and see what that right arm can help with, and see if that right arm can help this offense get on track because Hamilton certainly needs to bounce back from last week's difficult loss. The Argos won the toss, they deferred, so Hamilton wants the ball. And where wind can be a factor so much in the stadium, it's gentle right now from the east at just seven kilometers an hour at 25 degrees Celsius, a beautiful, clear, Summer night, Friday night football here on TSN as Boris Beatty is about to get this game underway. Four games in five weeks. They count them off and and mark it off against the Argos. A penalty before the opening kickoff. Oh. I saw Tom Valesi blow his whistle, stepped out on the football field, and got him kicking from the 20 yard line now. A delay a game call. How often do you see a penalty? Uh, before? I, I hope I this, have not. Hope this is, is livid. He's about to kick this to the Lake Ontario. This better not be a sign of things to come as we are underway after an opening penalty, opening kickoff down to Lawrence Woods at the 20. And then up across the 35, where Matthew Schiltz, who got three starts for the Montreal Alouettes last season, comes in for his first start as a member of the Ticats. Well, and I know what it's like running that football field for the first time, saddling up, being the guy where your adrenaline's running, you just want to get out there. And I know if Schiltz's anything like I was, he wants to get hit first, pull it down and run, because he's very good at doing that, settling him in, lock down and start moving the sticks incrementally. And, Going up against a tough defense here in Toronto that uh, I really thought was a difference last week along with their special teams. And they had injuries too. Of course, Dane Evans hurt his shoulder. Braylon Addison out for the season after a torn Achilles. So in a play fake, Schultz off to Tim White. Gets across the 40 to get things started up to about the 43 as we meet that Hamilton offense brought to you by Expedia. Yeah, and Brandon Rebenberg is veteran up there on that offensive line. I love the look. Um, his Hamilton look, yeah, it looks good on him, but hey, that's that's been a problem for them. He's going to have to keep everybody in check tonight. And these two guys, Jackson and Dunbar, boy, they've got to see the football a lot tonight, in my opinion, to get this offense kick-started and keep them going for four quarters. I'm talking 15, 20 touches apiece at least. Call it a gain of five for Tim White. Second and five, Hamilton 43, looking off to the right. And it's completed to Keandre Smith, who had three catches, the rookie last week out of Guelph, and his first catch in the CFL career two weeks ago against Montreal. Yeah, one of the deepest throws and hardest throws you have to make in the Canadian Football League here. Opposite hash on a rope, on the money. Well, that's a good sign. Nice play fake, start to drive, and then a sharp, crisp throw. The width of the football field, and uh, he's on point, it looks like, early. DeAndre Smith getting the start again at 10, first and 10, up near midfield for the Ticats, and Matthew Schultz handing off to Don Jackson, uh, finally a leading rusher on the team that is not a quarterback after Jackson's carries last week lead the way on the ground. Yeah, right. We talked about Speedy Beeman in a different uniform. What about Jacare Davis? That big horse right there, man. That guy can eat right there and make life miserable for any quarterback, no matter who it is. Wynton McManus, I think, is one of the most underrated players in the Canadian Football League. Does it all for Toronto. And then on the back end, he got a tall halfback to Sean Amos, fourth year play from East Carolina. Just another just lanky, rangy player in that secondary of Toronto. 
Gain of three, Jackson. Second and seven right at midfield, Hamilton. Opening possession in and out of the hands of Lamar Durant, who took a pop from Jamal Peters afterwards, so incomplete. And it's a third down. Yeah, Rod, you know, this is, well, as a quarterback, you're looking to find your rhythm, you know, moving the sticks here. This is manageable second and seven. This is a catchable football. Look, you got to have that. It's professional football. You're trying to win a football game early, set tempo and the rhythm, and a lackluster attempt at a football like that. Lamar uh, got to lock it in. So on that incompletion, the drop by Durant, Hamilton will punt. Michael Domagala at his 40. Ball right at midfield and Brandon Banks back here at Tim Hortons Field will field this punt for the Argos on the bounce into the hands of Banks at the 12. Goes to the right after a punt of 43 yards. Felix Grandoche escorts Banks out of bounds after a return of nine yards. And on comes McLeod Bethel Thompson, who last week was 17 for 27 for 230 and a touchdown pass. No picks. Yeah, McLeod Bethel Thompson is uh, it's just a difficult puzzle to solve. Uh, just, I mean, it's got all the parts, six foot four, 225. We talked about his mobility during pregame. We saw it last week. Thought it was a difference in the game. Um, he's got a gunsling mentality. Tries to fit balls in there. Sometimes he shouldn't. But I said, never lose that man. It's who you are. It's why you're here. And so they start at their 21 with Andrew Harris with them in the backfield. Faking to Harris, swinging off to the right to Mark Heath Ambles. He gets it up to the 25 and a couple of yards more. A gain of about six for the Argos as we look at their offense starting out. Yeah, McLeod's out there. With, he's got a left guard. Uh, Gregor, first year player from St. FX, St. Francis. And uh, boy, he's going to be tested tonight because that defensive line ain't no joke for Hamilton. And Andrew Harris and Curly Gittins draws in. Gittins is going to have to be a lot more active. Than he was last week as Cam uh, is out. Phillips is out of the football game. We know Harris is going to get his touches, but look for number 34, AJ Willette, to get some carries as well. Well, here's Harris at a second and short, and easily gets the first down and gets it up across the 40 for the Argos. Harris held to 47 yards rushing last week and only 17 the week before against Ottawa. Yeah, and this is a beautiful look at Andrew Harris cutting the ball back here as he gets it. Bang. He see patience. Whoop! He sees blocking coming over. Feels him. Sets it up. Knows it's there. And that's what about 2,500 touches will get you there. Is that feel, and that ability to know when your big guys are around and how they can help you out. 12 more yards from the sixth all-time leading rusher in CFL history to pass. Oh! It's knocked away by Julian Hauser. Had he volleyed that a little bit differently, might have had himself a pick. Yeah. Talked about his athletic ability off the top of the show and the highlights there about MBT, but well, he's going to get on his horse right here. He's right here, then he's going to get to show us his vertical. And uh, he times it up nicely. He felt that the whole way. As soon as he saw the back, Andrew Harris swing out, he kind of knew it was going. Great defensive play there. By the way, he does have an interception this year, dropping back in coverage. The BC place. Pick one off of Nathan Rourke. Knocking that one away. Second and 10 of the Toronto 40. Setting up the screen. Mark Heath Ambles trips a bit up and around the 45. Shy of a first down for Toronto. Yeah, Cariel Brooks was in open space, and you know it was going to be a great matchup. And well, and, and like you said, it just tripped as he was getting there. And uh, you know, Mark Mark Heath just kind of was his own worst enemy there. Right, boom, there he clicked his heel, and then he wasn't able to follow through with the cutback that he was trying to put on Brooks, and Brooks made the open field tackle, forcing the punt. So Lawrence Woods, the leading punt returner, in terms of average, heading into week 10, to accept this one from John Haggerty as the Argos on their first possession have to punt it away. Gets it inside his 20. Enoch Penny Laye can't get it. Uh -oh. He gets the edge. Uh -oh. Here comes Lawrence Woods. Haggerty, last one back. What? And great work by the punter John Haggerty to slow him down. A flag comes out, but he takes Woods down after a return of 47 yards. During the return, face mask. Toronto number 29, 15-yard penalty. Automatic. Haggerty got him, but he also got the face mask. Hence the flag. 
But it could have been worse for the Argos. Lawrence Woods, first big play. Hamilton with the ball in Argo territory when we come back. First big play of this game, Lawrence Woods, the punt return, then the penalty, Matty. Yeah, really nice return by Woods. Sets it up nicely, breaks the first tackle here, and then it's a no-no. Gunners get contained, they lose contain, and Haggerty, who is a soccer player, rugby player, 6'5", 225, takes a great angle. Easy call here by the officials. You see the face mask tack on another 15, but I'll take that any day as opposed to a touchdown. So Hamilton starting just inside the 35 of Toronto and again on the ground for Matthew Schultz he gets it inside the 25 on that play yeah I gotta like that quarterback design little counter little help up the middle second and three and watch him counter here big boy's gonna come right I, I, I believe it's just coming right here and gonna lead up in the hole he's gonna come on here and bang gonna follow him That's a, that's a decent job. So now second and short. Don Jackson first down and more. Peters finally takes him down, but not until he gets to the 15. So a couple of running plays for a team that does not run the ball very often. Yeah, I think one of the stars in the league, Don Jackson, that is just now starting to feel it almost halfway through the season. And I think he's as explosive as they come. And, does a nice job of showing you just about every arsenal in this playbook right there. Hurdle, little cut, little explosive through the hole. Don Jackson. We have an injury. The Argo down is Robert Priester, who is starting in the secondary because of an injury to Shaq Richardson for the Argos. We'll take a break. Back in a moment here in Hamilton. One of the things we've talked about, Matt, is the Ticats have to get Don Jackson more involved. Absolutely, and last week they did a nice job of that, and he was destroying Toronto in the first half, and then things kind of got off the rails, as we know, but Don Jackson can ignite any offense, and there's a touchdown catch, a late hit by Chris Edwards in the end zone, two yards deep. You've got to stop that, Mr. Officials out there, if you're watching. But uh, Don Jackson, boy, he can light it up in a heartbeat. I would, like I said, feed him the rock early and often. And the injured Argo, Robert Priester, got off under his own steam. But out of this play, Toronto's 16-yard line. Jackson again on the first down. And a flag comes out late as he's taken down. Winton McManus there, the leading tackler. But see what this flag is as they get it down near the 10. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. And that is against the Tie Cats and the center, Alex Fontana, for holding. So it pushes them back to the 26 now. Oftentimes, you know, you, you, you engage on a nose tackle like that and you try to get leverage and he tries to move a little quicker and then gets out of your cylinder. And, Officials there to pick it up. First and 20, the 26, pump fake. Is he taking off again? Schultz is trying. Enoch Moamba chasing him down, yeah. taking him down for a limited gain of a couple of yards for Matthew Schultz. It'll be second and long Hamilton. The long arm of Enoch Moamba just reached out there, and Matthew Schultz, I think, forgot just how difficult it is to outrun the 10 year vet. And this is absolutely a heck of a job of a very athletic quarterback in space. Enoch Mwamba, like a heat-seeking missile right there, hauls him in, reels him in, and takes him down. Big-time play. Picked up about a yard. So second down and long, about 19. Call it 18 to go from the 24. 24 and a half. Dumping it off. Tim White inside the 20. And inside the 15. A little closer, not nearly enough for a first down puts them in closer shape for a field goal try. Yeah, and you know, we saw a little inexperience there from Schiltz uh, trying to make something happen. He can't fault him for that. Takes a big loss, and you get a nice second down gain there, but you only move the sticks, and you're eight yards short. It's a difference in the loss, and just throwing one away right there. So Seth Small comes in. 
eight for nine in the season, longest of 30. He really hasn't been tested from any distance and, so far. And, and talking to Orlando Steinhauer, he's just living. He says, we can't do this. Just We can't be making 15, 20-yard field goals. We got to be scoring the football. And this is an example of that. And you said it, Rod. His longest field goal this year is 30 yards. And hey, they'll take three points against their arch rival any day. Another they short like field goal. The end zone. Three nothing lead. Back in Hamilton, Brandon Banks, eight great years as a member of the Tiger Cats. Looking back to the beginning when Speedy B wore a different number, they put it up on the board and they made the announcement remembering what a great tie cat he was and now the cheers that he got from the Hamilton faithful remembering him as well and for all the the hate if you will between the Argos and tie cats nothing but love there for Brandon Banks yeah you can call it hate Rod. <laughs> it is what it is for just about everybody else over the middle on first down starting at the 40 the Declan. fullback Declan Cross what Went to school at McMaster in a big game for Toronto to start things that's, off. That's amazing. That's what he does for this football team. Knocks big guys out of the way, plays special teams, and he catches the footballs. His 82nd catch of his career. Little check down Charlie action going on there. It'll take Declan Cross over anybody in the secondary for that matter. Coming gain, straight downhill. Gain a 17 cross. Over midfield. First down. Argos down three. Andrew Harris. Tough sled. Gets it down inside the Hamilton 50. How about that Tiger Cat defense, Matty? Yeah, it was chopping wood last week in the first 30 minutes, anyways. And then uh, the Toronto Argonauts brought out a chainsaw and changed that. But Dylan Winboy got chops wood 24 7, four sacks on the season, an incredible player. And Cam Kelly. Uh, I, was, I about blew my mind when I saw this stat. He's got three picks this year. It's tied for league lead. Love that. Sam. Playing that. And Kerry Brooks, I think, is uh, the missing link. No offense to Alvin Darby, but I really like what Kerry Brooks to this uh, to the secondary. He completes it, in my opinion. Looked like it was partially deflected. It does get through to Tommy Neal getting the start with the injury to Cam Phillips just before this game. Neal. Yeah, that ball came out pretty quickly. McLeod Bethel Thompson on target, but just well played in the secondary for Hamilton. And I thought if McLeod had a little bit more time and patience with his eyes, he might have missed a receiver downfield. But, you know, it's live to play another one, play some field position here, and see what Haggerty can do, see if he can pin him back. Well, the last time Haggerty punted to Lawrence Woods, Woods returned it as far as the punt went, about 48 yards. This is a third and two. The Argos do kick it away and see how they cover Woods this time, who won't touch it, lets it roll into the end zone and put the first point on the board for the Toronto Argonauts after a 47-yard punt. A flag does come out as it's standing now. The Rouge, a 3-1 Tiger Cat lead. Injury. Let's go down to Matthew Shinetti. Yeah, it happened on that first series in Toronto. The Ticats quarterback said he came off. He didn't tell anyone, Rod, which the Ticats medical staff didn't like because after the game, when he was telling them and taking off his pads, that he felt something in his throwing shoulder. It was an ultrasound, an x ray, and then an MRI that deduced it could be a little while for Dane Evans. Now he says he's going to take it slow. But he's giving Matthew Schultz all of his support. And Matthew Schultz, according to offensive coordinator Tommy Condell, has so much knowledge through all the offensive co coordinators that he worked with in his years in Montreal. And Condell says, I, I like to know what my quarterback sees so I understand Matthew's both his confidence and the way that he sees the field around him. I'm quite confident that I can give him enough in the playbook as it already is so that he can be efficient. As for Braylon Addison, who injured his Achilles rod, he will have a procedure done on that on Monday. And that one really hurt, obviously, for Addison, Matthew. Heartbreaking uh, for the Cats, too. He was having a good game. It's intercepted. Argos with the ball, Robbie Smith. And Robbie takes it inside. The five deflected, and he picks off Matthew Schiltz. And the defense stands up for Toronto. Robbie Smith with the pick to put the Argos in a first and goal. Yeah, you're just trying to side on it and get it over the defender who gets upfield. Robbie Smith, the right side of your screen. You watch him drop off. He gets his hands up. Much like we saw Julian Hauser in the first series. And then, and then 
and is, is right here and watch him. He'll just seek out this play, much like we saw Julian Hauser earlier in the game for Hamilton. She's back trying to release in the flat, gets his hands up, and then here gets on his horse and takes it inside the five. So Smith sets him up. Turnover and getting close to the goal line. Andrew Harris trying to pull his way right down. It'll be a second and goal as he gets it to about the one. But how about Robbie Smith, third year at a Wolford Laurier? I don't know if you saw them. I know you like know this roster, Rod, like I do, but the Argonauts like some Wolford Laurier players. And uh, there's one of them right there. Made a big play in this one. Turned the complexion this first quarter. Run around Robbie Smith. Way to go. Yeah, so offense they have currently getting out of Laurier. You're right, Matty. And minus 16, the Tie Cats are now in the turnover ratio and this really hurts in a game where they must be feeling more pressure in this rivalry with the Argos they lead it by two points but Toronto on the threshold of taking their first lead of this game that close to the end zone Chad Kelly in and he's in the end zone Kelly with the touchdown for Toronto would not be denied took a big lick before he crossed the goal line Kept that big body going. Well, he just steamrolled right there. 6'2, 216 from Mississippi. Watch it coming right at you. A little play fake. Get downhill. Speedy B better get out of the way. Bam. There's a the big hit right there. Speedy B, look at him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got an assist on the play like they designed it and drew it up. Ryan Dinwiddie. I like it. All right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put Speedy B out in front and block. He's not going to block anybody. Can't, uh, can't, we're, Kelly, I want you, Chad, I want you to run through two or three players, and then Speedy B is going to hold you up, push you in the end zone. You just get close, and, and Speedy can take care of you then. So, yeah. <laughs> 16 with the assist. Chad Kelly, first CFL touchdown. Boris Speedy with the point after. Kelly gets in. Product, as you said, Matty, will miss in a couple of years there, and one of the leading passers in the school's history and all smiles down there in the Argo sideline. Yeah, Rod, here, here's how it all got started. Number 40 down in the line of scrimmage right here. You're going to watch him. Watch him do his thing. He recognizes his play, back crosses his face. Get your hands up, bat it to yourself, get on your horse. Don't get run down, though, by Matthew Schill. So it looked like he pulled a hammy right there, too. And then the touchdown run, Speedy B out front. I like it. Watch it. Yeah, I'm gonna go Speedy B. There goes Kelly breaking tackles and Speedy B. Versus <laughs> Get in that end zone. That's just comedy. That's beauty in football, right? Because guys will have a blast tomorrow, especially if they win. Breaking that play down, talking noise about it. Another look at it. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of Hamilton guys scraped and we're in the hole, but Chad Kelly not gonna be denied. Well, it's not always about blocking. It's about pushing, too. The assist. <laughs> Look at that. Smallest yeah. guy in the field going, uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. I just did that. <laughs> so Chad Kelly gets uh, for CFL points. He got in at quarterback in BC for a short period of time. And they're lost to the Lions back in week three. So now the Ticats are down. Lawrence Woods across the 20, across the 40. Now for Lawrence Woods up around the 43, where Schultz will be right back on the field after throwing that interception. Second pass deflected by the Argos deep er, in this game. Yeah, so the last two series is Rod. You know, we've seen Schultz get, take a sack on first and 10, being pushed back. And then uh, they had a nice second down play underneath. It got him close, third and eight. And then this pass, he goes in the back of the football field and he throws a pick. And here's Schultz, first couple of games. And uh, not bad. Those are great numbers. I'll take that all day long. You can win with that as your offensive coordinator. Back to Don Jackson. And not much there. Winton McManus, their leading tackler, their weak side linebacker in and on that one again. Yeah, I just tell folks uh, if they can just key on number 48, Winton McManus, they'll have a lot of fun watching a football game because he's all over the football field. Don Jackson, just keep feeding him. It'll come. Just keep feeding him. That's a matchup. I, I, th I thought I heard Davis matching that one up. He was going Mwamba and McManus against Don Jackson. You watch those three, you'll have a good time watching this football game.
Jackson only got a yard at second down and nine. Eight three Argos now passing his shields off to the left completing the first down. Stephen Dunbar with his first catch of this game tonight and that's enough to move the sticks. Yeah you don't you don't realize how big he is. He's six foot three second year player from Houston and he's coming right in your couch. Be careful move the Cheetos. Boom. <laughs> Oh man, I'll check it. Look, take a look at that one again, because it was going down between his legs. I don't know if he secured it before he got out of bounds, but evidently we're moving on. At the snap of the ball here across midfield. Little play fake and quick hitter over the middle. That's complete to David Ungerer back in the Tie Cats lineup, and another first down, Hamilton. Yeah, and Unger, I mean that's. He got to be on the same page as your quarterback here because the ball's got to be out in a hurry. He's right here. He's got to get up there and look high. Little play fake. Ball's coming through a little small window right between the tackle and the guard there. Winton can't get over there in time. Nice timing, nice play, good pickup. Ungerer's fifth catch of the season, putting him over 100 yards for the year. With the Toronto 37 now. And the heat was coming McManus on the blitz and a flag comes out after the tackle. He took Schultz down and then a flag came out. Yeah and you can watch McManus he's penetrating he's reading this right off the bat. Just a smart player. And McMahon major foul roughing the pass. Toronto number 48. 15 yard penalty automatic first down. That's a tough one right there. McManus is right here and he's coming downhill. He gets in front of the, he gets leverage on the blocker and he's in Schiltz's kitchen sink before he knows it. He can't move him. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I, that, that was roughing the pass around McManus. I didn't I didn't see anything there. Neither did I. Achimpong came in late, but that didn't look too bad yeah, he either. He was just kind of like securing him, and I don't know if he slid into him with his knees, but I didn't see anything there, Rod. Right? There's a challenge on the flag. Now a challenge flag has been thrown by Ryan Dinwiddie, who obviously, with some help, yeah, I think got the word that uh, I think he didn't see anything either. I think this guy, so we saw. We have picked up the roughing the passer call. It'll be second down. So to clarify here now they're moving it back the command center yeah. said it is not a penalty and it, so they picked up the challenge flag by Ryan Dinwiddie. And I don't know how many times we've talked about this in studio you know we keep, you know we're yelling at the screen you know and uh, and the command center has gotten involved and I think uh, in the right spot here uh, you know because obviously there's not a penalty on the play and you don't want to have a coach challenge something and and uh, and for all of intense purposes for some reason not beat overturned and to me they got the call right. They got it right. It's a second and 15 after the loss and the sack by McManus who was involved in this play too after the catch by Unger. So tell me when McManus he's all over the place. He certainly is in this game so far. You look at his stats you know coming this game he had 46 tackles. Um, it, it, he had five special teams tackles if you can believe that two quarterback sacks a forced fumble interception knockdown three tackles for losses the guys all over the place with Let, McManus. Let's just say the Argo defense has been doing its job so far through the first quarter here in round two of this rivalry. Toronto leads it 8 three. Through one quarter here at Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton the Argos lead the Ticats 8-3. Defense for Toronto, Matty, the biggest reason why forcing that turnover that led to the Argo touchdown. Yeah, Rod Smith, a nice job of playing, watching it, and recognizing what was going on and using his athletic ability. And next thing you know, Toronto's in the end zone. Difference in the first 15 minutes of this football game. It's not that hard. You got to take care of the football. It's been an Achilles heel for the Hamilton Tiger Cats uh, first part of the season. And uh, it's Dane Evans uh, can't, couldn't hang on to it. He gave it up too many times. And, and uh, quite frankly uh, more of that tonight is there is a problem here Rod. and another problem for the Argos here Matty this is Andrew Harris this was moments ago 
He was favoring his right side last week against Hamilton and appears to be doing so again and heading to the dressing room for the Argo. So Harris out of the game for now and a field goal try for Seth Small. And this one, his longest attempt since becoming a tie cat at 43 yards. And yes, he can kick the longer ones as Small does make a bigger one. Three points on the board and now a two point Argo lead. Week 10 continues, and how about this? Nathan Rourke, BC Lions, starting the doubleheader against Bo Levi Mitchell and the Calgary Stampeders at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, 5 local time, and after that, the Edmonton Elks coming off a humiliating loss again at BC Place, take on the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Cody Pajardo and company, rested coming off the bye. And a big one, you consider those Western standings for those two teams as well. Couple of big games in the CFL and TSN doubleheader Saturday, tomorrow, tonight, starting the second quarter, the Argos with the ball, McLeod Bethel Thompson handing off to A.J. Willette, breaks a big one up the middle, still on his feet, finally taken down, Julian Hauser chased him down, but Willette in for the injured Andrew Harris, has it inside the 45 of the Ticats, and a first down. Yeah, just watch this. Watch this in the interior. Bang, bang, getting up on second level here. And you can watch Alan Blattick uh, do their thing. Get there, seal it off. And then AJ with his fresh legs explodes through the hole. And then runs the daylight. Loving it. No Andrew Harris, no problem for the Argonauts. And right back in the hands of 34. And this time, a little tough. Sledding there, Javon Santos Knox had him wrapped in the legs, and he does push forward to about the 40. Well, let uh, one of the several Ohio Bobcats have been in the CFL, an old teammate of Nathan Rourke's. Yeah, and uh, watched a lot of film over him uh, when he was down there being a Bobcat in Ohio and an explosive running back. And obviously, younger legs, not as many touches, not as much wear in the tires. See if they'll keep feeding him the football. Two carries so far, will I? They throw, it's knocked away. Jamal Rule covering Brandon Banks, his old teammate. Yeah, he ran that route for him and got there just about the same time the ball did. Really nice job by Roll. Just one on one right here, folks, making it happen. Watch, boom, drops. Sees it, gets there, nice, come right over the top. Brandon kind of felt him coming over the top, leaned into the ball as opposed to moving his feet. I think he gave Roll an opportunity to bat that away. Boris Beatty in to try the field goal. This from 47 put down by John Haggerty. And it is money for Beatty and the Argos. So they gave up the three, they get the three back. Five point Toronto lead, second quarter, Friday Night Football. The CFL and TSN family would like to give a shout out to longtime Ticats fan Mike Piccolo, who's at home watching the game tonight. Pick, as he's known to his family and friends, has been a CFL and Hamilton fan for over 50 years. And recently, Mike has had some health issues, but we are looking forward to seeing you back at Tim Hortons Field soon, Mike. All the best from all of us here. All Ticats fan right around the world and around Canada, wishing Pick the best. All the best. Keep fighting. Mike. Absolutely. First and ten, Hamilton 40, down by five again. Schiltz knocked away nicely. Jamal Peters stepping there on Tim White. Good coverage, Argo, second down. Yeah, I'm always impressed with the size, typically in, in Toronto's backfield. And Jamal Peters is six foot two, second year player from Mississippi State. Can't do much better than this right there. Long arms. Come in handy right there. Break up on Tim White. White with just one catch last week in their 34 20 loss in Toronto. Has two in this night. Second down. That's complete. Keandre Smith has another catch. He gets it across the 50. Good work after the catch by Smith to get the first down, Hamilton. Yeah, it was, and he started going the wrong way. And I mean, we got a bird's eye view from him here, and you know, you got to know where the sticks are. And I think he did. 
and uh, his instinct said, no, I, I, I can lose a little ground right here, break this tackle, use leverage and speed against Enoch Mwamba. And then he does. He toughs that out and moves the sticks. Nice job by Keandra. Football's in his blood. Mentioning yeah, last week, his father, Adrian, actually started his career with Hamilton, but a long time ago. Setting up a draw to Don Jackson. Lots of room. Jackson, another first down for the Ticats on the move inside the Argo 40. Gain of 19 yards, Don Jackson. Yeah, I just watched the big boys work here. They're just going to do their thing, kind of set it up, a little drop, a little draw action, get up to the second level, seal Enoch Mwamba. Jackson's into the secondary, and now they're going, oh, hell. Oh, man. We got to tackle this guy? That's just a nice job by the big boys up front. Well done. Fontana, Revenberg, Woodmansey, tip of the hat to the big boys. Gain of 19, Jackson. Another first down from the 39, Toronto. A deep look here to the end zone, intercepted. Another turnover, a flag comes out though. And it's Maurice Carnell, newcomer to the Argos, getting his first CFL action. Carnell with the injury earlier to Robert Priester gets the pick in the end zone, but let's see what the flag is about. Well, Durant just gave up on a play because he thought he had defensive pass interference, never once tried to get after the interception. Pass interference, Toronto number eight. Ball we placed in the and he was right. Line. Automatic, first down. There's the P.I. Just covered like a blanket. No way that Schiltz is fitting this in there. There's that's that's an that's an easy easy look right arm. Just Amos just undresses Durant. And right to your point, Parnell coming in there nicely for Priester playing over the top. Too bad Amos drew the penalty. Jamie Newman, the quarterback for Hamilton. See if he can punch it in. Flags out again as he does take it in for the Hamilton touchdown. So let's see. Offside, Toronto defensive line. The penalty is declined. We have a touchdown. Newman, touchdown, Tiger Cats. Aided by that big pass interference against Toronto. Big time mistake by Toronto there because they had that receiver blanketed. Takes the penalty and then allows Newman the offensive line to do this. Big six foot three, 230 pounder from Wake Forest, first year player, find the end zone. <laughs> it's gonna be tough to stop moving him. He's no Ted White, but he is a big boy. And I asked, I asked Orlando Steinhauer about that. We had a good laugh on Wednesday. He says, no, no, no. He's he, he he's a physical football player. He, he can move that 230 pounds around. Still hasn't thrown a pass yet in the CFL. He has three carries for two yards and two touchdowns now. Going for two in a one-point game, and they get it to make it a three-point Tiger Cat lead into the hands of the rookie, Keandre Smith from Matthew Schiltz. So a touchdown for Jamie Newman. That gets them ahead again, and then they add two more. From Schiltz to Smith. Ticats up three. Yeah, Keanu Smith finding the end zone. Not the way he would like. Just full fly and die here. And Schiltz is going to get the edge. He looks inside. Then he finds Keandra wide open for a two-point convert. First of his career. Give it to him. Goes down, secures it. And Rodney, like he said earlier, it's in his blood. It sure is. So after that touchdown, it was Jamie Newman, number 14, you saw there with the touchdown after the pass interference against the Argos. And so it's Curly Gettins on the kick return now. And he gets it up to around the 30. But this is what we're talking about. Uh, there's Keandre Smith. And here's his proud, I'm sure, Papa. But this is back in the 1996 Great Cup. Right on this footprint of land in Old Iberwind Stadium. That's the right. interception of Danny McManus. Adrian Smith takes it in for the touchdown. He got the pick six, and the Argos beat Edmonton that year, 43-37. Yeah, Adrian, he was 
multiple CFL All-Star, three-time Grey Cup champion. Shout out to his wife, Denise. Daughters, Michaela and Charlize. I know he's a proud father, watching his son score his first two points in the CFL. So now in the hands of the Argos, and that one intended for A.J. Willett. Getting playing time now with the injury to Andrew Harris, and no, Richard Leonard says, not on my watch. <laughs> that's, what that's what they're taught to do. Make that happen. Pass knockdowns, pass breakups. Those are stops, Rod. Zero yards. Tackle for loss. Pass knockdown. Sack. All those things add up. Leonard had kind of the Dikembe finger wag there, right? Yeah, he did. Don't you be trying that here. Right? Second and ten, Toronto 30. It. Oh yeah. We got we got a game. It's a three-point tie cat lead. Blitz coming. McLeod gets it away and coming in, closing quickly with Siande Evans on Giddens. Third down. And okay, he's just coming. And he and he's getting on his horse and he's he is flying trying to time this up right downhill in McLeod Bethel's lap and he's got to get it out there. He's almost late with that. It's a really nice job. Of Siante Evans, another Wiley veteran on the back end trying to pick him one. So John Haggerty to punt it away from about his 20. Lawrence Woods has had one big return in this game, taking this off the hop inside his 30. And he breaks it up to about the 37 after a good 52 yard punt by Haggerty. So back in the hands of Matthew Schultz, they got a touchdown in their last possession to take the lead. Well, special teams is playing a big part of this. This punting duel going on right now with both these punters, returners. These special team units are getting worked out. Field goal kickers are being challenged. Snappers are they're going deep into the snapping rotation. And uh, special teams, such a factor in the Canadian Football League. Up near the 38 of Hamilton to get things going now. Back up a field goal. Good idea. And Schultz just gets it himself and he picks up about a yard. Business decision, Rod. Right? Yeah. Abort, abort, <laughs> abort. I think Enoch Mwama had a bead on him. Matthew Schultz, you know, he's very athletic and and uh, he played fakes and he's going to pull it and keep it and watch Mwamba. Now, come on, come on, come on, come on, come this way. You better get down. <laughs> I love that. Schultz isn't afraid to run. He had a 30 yard carry two weeks ago. Sometimes. You got to know when to just give it up and live to play another play. That was one of my biggest things I could not figure out, but Matthew's got that figured out there. You knew one way. Oh, man. Don Jackson. Oh, it's all tangled up there with the Sean Davis. Yeah, that's, that's a beautiful open field tackle. Got to have it. Get off the football field. Two and out. Hamilton, worst in the league. Most in the league, or certainly twice as many as the Toronto Argonauts, right? coming into this football game basically and this is open field on Don Jackson Don making make it fix about two yards in front of Amos and he's like really really you got to come to me first and as soon as he does he goes and gets him so Amos takes him down Don McGowan inside his 30 after that two and out by Hamilton wow. Brandon Banks nice punt. booming punt by Don McGowan to chase Banks down near the 10 a 57 yard punt and Banks is lucky to get it back to the 15. Julian Hauser in there and a four yard return for the X. Ty Cat Gray now in double blue. Bethel Thompson back on. This was Andrew Harris's last carry. And it came late in the first quarter. He shortly after left the game and has not come back. Let's get an update from Matthew. Yeah, when he came off, Rod, I was right in his line of sight. He came off and started to feel around his shoulder, right shoulder, right pec area. He went right to the Oracle's medical staff. They pulled him over to the table and started to look at that area, move the shoulder around. We were going to talk about at this point in the game, a pitch count for Andrew Harris. As Matty mentioned, 2,500 offensive carries in his career, offensive touches, I should say. But immediately when he spoke to the Argos medical staff, they told him, okay, you have to relax. They took him to the locker room, came out without his pads. He's done for the night, Rod. Thank you, Matthew. So the Argos without Andrew Harris, deep in their own zone. Deep ball wide open. Tommy Neal getting more action with the injury to Cam Phillips just before the game as he stumbles 
and is limping now. That's afterwards, after he was out of bounds, and he is hurting now after a reception of 44 yards. Oh, man, I hate to see that because that's a nice corner route. He's just going to get down there and run a corner route, and McLeod waits and waits and waits and extends it down there. Boy, he's got him beat from the jump. He's waiting on the football there and as he goes out of bounds. Oh, right there. He looks like he stepped on something over there in front of the signage. And he looked like he rolled his ankle. Watch this. Right towards the sign. At the end of this play, as he's pushed out of bounds, if you just keep it going right here, keep it going, keep it going, you watch right. There. Right there. Wow. Oh, are you kidding me? It's like as dangerous, as violent as the games on the football field, you're stepping on something or rolling an ankle as you're off of it. Well, it's just. But it doesn't seem to be fair. Awful to see a gain of 44. He has two catches for 48. That's his biggest yeah. in his young career. He had three for 50 coming in. He's having a game and going to see all kinds of time. Oh, it's just disappointing to see. So frustrating for that young man, Tommy Neal. In his kid. second year, yeah, played his university ball here in Hamilton at McMaster. And oh, man. He worked so hard for those opportunities, and then you just hate to see it. Good on. Hopefully, it's nothing serious, but taking a good long look at his ankle. The ultimate race around the country is back. Get into the new season of the Amazing Race Canada. That is Tuesday at nine, five Central. Is that Marshall Ferguson? Does he, does he host that show? <laughs> Only on CTV Center. Marshall Ferguson, John Montgomery. <laughs> See some likeness there. I do. I do. I was busting his chops last week in Ottawa about that. Tuesday at 9, 8 Central. Amazing Race Canada. Uh, he's an amazing young broadcaster, too, Marshall Ferguson. He sure happy, is. Happy to have his team. Oh, it's good to walk. Maybe he'll be able to walk this off. Well, and talk about Marshall, great quarterback here at McMaster. Yeah. The, before the time of Tommy Neal, who is heading off the field now after There's this big 44 yard gain and then Watch this it. right there he hits that pad and wow. it forces him over it's like are you kidding me uh, but best thing I can tell you right now is keep that thing moving do not lock up on it keep it moving get on the bike get that blood flow in there Tape it up, stay out there, but hopefully you can play through that. With the game by Neal, now out of the game. It's at the Hamilton 51. Argos, Bethel Thompson, incomplete. Not even close to being on the same page there. Tunde Adeleke had a better shot at anyone on that one. Sometimes it happens. Bethel Thompson, five for nine for 78 yards. Check that five for 10 with that incomplete pass. And out of that 78, a lot of it, and then one play to Neal, 44 yards. With the Hamilton 51, second down. With a tight count in his face, he gets it away and he completes it. Inside the 20, Mark Heath Ambles with a delicate all over him and two big passes by Bethel Thompson. This one 34 marching him down the field. First of all, let's talk about the protection MBT gets. Good job up front by the Hogs. He climbs the pocket. Then he gives his receiver a chance. Mark Heath Ambles was a very physical receiver. Everybody in camp in Toronto talks about him being physical. McLeod gave him a chance to show off his physicality and he comes up with a big catch. So here come the Argos inside the 20 at the 18. A.J. Willette. His job for the night with Andrew Harris's day done with the injury, and he gets it near the 15. Just watch Micah Johnson here. He just absolutely destroys the middle, makes life miserable. Micah Johnson right in the middle here. He, 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 just watch him do his thing. Get off of me. Get off of me. He forces A.J. to take a path he didn't want to because he was two yards in the backfield. Called playing on the other side of the L.O.S. Second and seven after the gain of three. 
A look into the end zone and nobody's home. The delegate, the Thai Cats, the closest one there, and a little mix up in communication, and it's a third down and a field goal situation, Toronto. You work so hard for those opportunities, you're down by three. You're in, you're in the red zone, second and seven, manageable situation, and you're 10, 15 yards off with your intended target. It's tough to swallow right there if you're Ryan Dinwiddie trying to find some magic down there in the red zone. So on comes Boris Beatty, one for one, made a 47 yarder. Toronto, this. Toronto's 31 percent down there in the red zone. Not good enough. This will be a 22 yarder by comparison for Beatty, and he is two for two. And with four minutes and 22 seconds to go until halftime, we are all tied again, 14-14. Brandon Banks, the memories Tie Cats fans have of him. Once Tim Hortons Field opened up, this is the East Final back in 2014, his second year. Remember this, Matty, against Montreal? Yeah, I do, and he's just playing with all kinds of gears and speed that a lot of people have no understanding of. And <laughs> he's just making it look easy against some incredible athletes. And he's just changing gears and making people miss and putting the ball in the end zone. And I thought I looked good in 16 as a Hamlin Tiger Cat, but Speedy B, boy, you wore that jersey out while you were here. They won that game. They went to the Grey Cup. He thought he had the punt return for a touchdown that would have won it for the Tiger Cats over Calgary, but there was a penalty on that play, an infamous moment in the career of Brandon Banks. Yeah, and Unger. Hamilton number 83. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Yeah, he's just a little, a little overzealous here. A little early with his waggle. There's McLeod still trying to get on the same page with Speedy B. Do whatever you got to do, man. Well, they both admitted it. Yeah. They, they have not been on the same page a lot of the time. They're yeah. still getting to and know you, each and, other. And, you, and, you, and I love that. That's communication. You hear about defenders talking about it all the time. Offensively, coaches with their players, coaching them all. All the communication's got to happen 24 7. You see it happening live on the sidelines. Passing now, completing it to Dunbar. On that first down and 15 and gets it across the 40. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would just start calling GFOs. Get freaking open for Stephen Dunbar, right? Just isolate him and let him go one on one. Make it easy. That guy's a beast. I asked Milt a couple weeks ago, I said, You believe in Dunbar? He says, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Milt says he's good. He's good. Stamp of approval. From 85. And flag coming out too, and some finger pointing. Sam Achimpong. Procedure. Hamilton number 64. Five yard penalty. Remains second down. Says it's against his guy, Colderwood Manzi, the right guard for the Thai Cat. So it was already a second and long. We'll call it second and longer now, about <laughs> 13 yards to go. Yeah, you just don't realize how big these guys are down on the football field. You know, you look at Wood Manzi, he's 6'5, 325, and Archipong. You talk about a beast. He's six foot five, two seventy five, all day long, and they're just banging heads, locking horns, and doing it a lot over the next month. By the yeah, way, this yeah. is game two it's of like, four in five weeks. You again? Here we go. <laughs> Familiarity breeds contempt, to be sure. From the Hamilton thirty-seven, second and thirteen. Well, it's complete, but it's too short. And it'll be a third down, Dunbar again. Yeah, good fundamentals by Schiltz here, avoiding the rush, sliding to his left, and then finds Stephen Dunbar. And even better fundamentals from the secondary in Toronto, playing everything in front of him and making him punt the football. They've given the three minute warning, and the Argos are going to get the ball back in a 14 14 tie. Complaints that Farhan Lalji wasn't here and Kate Burness was back. I'm Jermaine Franklin, and I'm going to host the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding, I'm here. <laughs> Get out of here, Jermaine. <laughs> hey, Kate, what do you think they said to me when you started hosting back in 2018? I should fill you in on that a little bit. When's Kate coming back? 41 yard punt in the hands of Brandon Banks. So Kate and the panel, There's they're coming up. There's some magic. He gives the ball to our Matthew Schnetti on the sidelines. Speedy B hand delivered that one to Shooter. 
Yeah, a little old magic right there from 16. Good field position. I'll take that. Look at Bethel Thompson's numbers. Their biggest play offensively was a pass interference, and or excuse me, that was Hamilton's biggest one to get them down close. But. Huge, right? The first 28 minutes, forget about it. Right here, you get down now, score right before half. You get a lot of momentum. You get the ball in the second half. That is, that is Simone Lawrence saying, "Hello, Hamilton." The leading, me. leading tackler in the history of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and in there on AJ Willette to stop him cold and lost yardage there for the Argos. Yeah, Simone's right here, and uh, he's going to be in Willette's kitchen sink before he can get started. That's a tackle for a loss. It's getting the job done, forcing second and 13. Simone Lawrence, everybody, been doing it a while. Missed a month, but came back recently. Ticats glad to have 21 back. Three man rush now on a second and 13. Three man rush. And oh, he gets it away to a left. Bethel Thompson was tied up. It looked like he was at a ball and chain. He, he couldn't he couldn't go anywhere, but he does get it off to Willette, who doesn't get enough for the first down, but Gets it up across the 45. I mean, you're a defensive tackler, defensive player, period. You got a quarterback by the ankle. You're starting to worry, right? It's like, I'm not trying to hurt the guy. I'm just trying to tackle the guy. And look, it's like he's trying to steer wrestle him and then tie him up and get his hands in the air and get a time on it. But McLeod Bethel Thompson actually found a receiver and got a few yards. Dylan Wynn thought he had another sack. Had to wait a bit too long And this point. Beautifully done inside the 10. Nice punt, Haggerty. Down to the Hamilton 7 with 1.44 in the clock. A 51 yard punt for the Aussie punter of the Argos to have to force the Ticats to start in deep in their own zone. I can't believe how big punters are these days. I mean, I mean 6'5, 225 pounds. I mean, you got Richie Leone, best in the league over there in Ottawa. He's 6'4. I just, I mean, big legs, right? The CFL. These guys are amazing to watch live. We're seven stories high, and the ball's coming up by us. <laughs> In the base punting category, he leads the CFL. Yes. Over 48. And that's Schultz calling his own number on first down. And then net punting, you know, tip of the hat goes to Richie Leone. And, uh, you know, that's what you're looking at at the end of the day. And Leone's at 39.4 net. And uh, to me, that is uh, that's after everything in, all in returns and everything. You know, it's, that's huge when you're at 39.4. And by the way, that inside the 10, a stat that the CFL keeps, that's the seventh time this season that Haggerty's done it. He leads the CFL ahead of Leone now inside the 10. That's then that's a great battle to watch if you're a CFL fan into stats. And it is tipped at the line of scrimmage and a flag comes out. The intended receiver is Tim White. Offside, Hamilton number one. That penalty is declined, third down. So Lamar Durant is called on the offside. And very quickly a third down after the Schiltz gain and the penalty declined. Yeah, Lamar just hadn't settled in yet, you know, and, and um, after coming back, had a drop early offsides there. He drew a penalty down deep and uh, which was huge for the Thai Cats and got them in scoring position around the one yard line. But yeah, it just hadn't settled in. We know he's got talent and uh, uh, he could be a huge addition once he gets going with his Thai Cat offense. Missed the first six games of his Hamilton Tiger Cat career. Had been with the BC Lions before but signed on and only two weeks ago made his Hamilton debut. So punting it away is Domagala late in this first half. That's returnable. And it being Beatty's range, Banks <laughs> getting it now to the 45. And we. We'd like to welcome our viewers and TSN's one and three are watching the World Junior Championship. Rod Smith, Matt Dunnigan, Matthew Shinetti here in Hamilton for the second game. 
the second straight week between the Tiger Cats and the Argonauts, and it's a 14-14 tie late in the first half here at Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton. First and ten. A chance to score late, but it's intercepted. The Argos wanted a penalty, and it's Siante Evans with it to nullify a chance. A challenge flag is out already, and now a late flag comes out as well on this play as there's a bit of a discussion going on at midfield. But they want the pass interference call, a critical point, too, in a tie game, and now another late flag comes out as all the talking continues. Yeah, just get used to this. We got two and a half. When we got ten more quarters of this, Rod. <laughs> right up <laughs> through Labor Day Monday. That's crazy. That's like a heavyweight bout that won't stop. Yeah, see, I'll tell you, Evans, you know, I, he had position high and over the top of Speedy B. Watch this. He's there. He's like, yeah, just come on. Yeah, he just kind of jacked him right in the shoulder and timing. Speedy B just laid there, got up, and with his arms in the air, watch him just push him here. Stops him from his progress down the football field. And then plays the football. No fly came out. Official standing right there. That's Siante Evans' second pick if it stands on the season. And there was no flag then, and a challenge flag by Ryan Dinwiddie was came out quick really to come, fast. very fast. Before all the other flags, the folks in stripes have been littering the field with yellow flags, all of it, after the play. As discussions continue. Yeah, get used to this. And then when you have both teams on the sidelines, like we do here in the East, uh, we have three missed get messy in a hurry. On play. Two on Hamilton, one on Toronto. Toronto is also challenging for pass interference. Oh my goodness. We're going to review the play. <laughs> well, Tom's got a lot to sort through right here. Tom Bless here. Man in the white hat tonight. Great crew on the field. A lot to sort through here. So he said, and all of these after the play, two against the Tie Cats and one against the Argos. There's a play there. I mean, you can't just throw your hands up if you get contact. You got to keep fighting. If you keep fighting, I think you might get the call. A little bit of a flop there from Speedy B. Siante says, thank you very much. Says, excuse me, I'll be taking that one the other way. And it wasn't long after that, the red challenge flag of Ryan Dinwiddie was out. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he got a good look at it. As, as did the official right there in front of the play. Banks has dealt with a lot of emotions this past week, really, facing his old team for the first time last Saturday at BMO and dealing with coming back to his old home at Tim Hortons Field tonight. But eventually all these emotions subside and they got a game to win and that, that's a big play. Yeah it is. And just because you don't you feel like you've been pass interfered with doesn't mean you stop on the play. Lamar Durant did it earlier. Speedy B does here. So was it interference after they review. Here's the announcement on that. After review, we have pass interference. Hamilton number seven. The ball we spot at the 22 yard line. Rondo knew it. We then apply a 10 yard penalty. As announced by the referee, agree. Tom Balesi. So it is P.I. and the Argos have the great chance to take the lead to the dressing room. What were the other two uh, flags in the field for? Did you hear that? Object the objectionable conduct. They're still discussing. They're going to move this up to the 12 yard line. <laughs> Hamilton's defenders refuse to move. They don't want to no, move. No, 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 no. We're not going back there. The, the, the added penalty was against Mark the tie cat, so it was the PI, and then they move it to the Hamilton 12. Bottom line is this we're under a minute to go till halftime. It's first and 10, Argos at the Hamilton 12 yard line. In a 14 14 time. The 
Ethel Thompson runs out of time, but a flag comes out as well. All right, I got to think this is going to be holding, plus he got a sack. And this is just a nightmare if that holds true for Toronto. Like I said, Rod, you go down here, score touchdowns, take some momentum in half. You won the coin Major toss. Major foul, face mask. Toronto number 54. Man. That penalty will apply at the end of the play. That's Lawrence will be second center. Down. So Justin Lawrence, the center, is called for the face mask. Micah Johnson. Yeah, watch him, watch him, watch Wreaking him. Wreaking havoc. Yeah, here he is, just watch him continue to push and get to McLeod, Bethel Thompson, moving mountains to get there. Literally, ball just rips underneath. Well, that's a nice rip move. But he had his commits on Lawrence, pulled him towards him and ripped right underneath and got to McLeod. So the push back to the 32 now. More heat coming as he gets it away. Oh, no, that's, that's, that's automatic first down. Dylan Wynn. That's roughing. And the flag does come out on Wynn, who pleads his case. Yeah, no, he stapled him. I think he stapled him. That's not allowed in today's game. McLeod's a big, big quarterback. I told you about that. 6'4", 225. Foul, roughing the passer. Hamilton, number 98. Yes. 15 yard penalty. Yes. And, and, and you know, we know that Dylan down. Wynn's motor runs hot. Right, he's chopping wood all the time. And he's right here. Dylan wins right there. And you just watch this guy work. And I think what happens is he gets there, he lifts him, and he staples him. Free shot right here. He gets him, lifts him, and he staples him right there with all his weight, and he can't do that. And uh, you know, I, I love the effort and the hustle. That's automatic first down, and you're still in business if they're trying to organize. Gets it back to the 17 and a first and 10. So back and forth we go, largely because of the flags. And this time it's the Argos after that roughing the passer call. And AJ Willette. Hamilton is challenging the ruling of roughing the passer. Oh, my we'll goodness. The play. This is the half that won't end quickly. Well, you know, these coaches are going to get involved, and this has been a game of field position. Defenses have tightened up in the red zone. Field goal kickers have been working overtime punters been working overtime teams cover teams been all over the place but I, I think this is yeah and here's Dylan right here second from the top he's gonna make a nice move in here he's got a free shot towards McLeod Bethel Thompson boom unabated basically and then he lifts him and he buries him and back in the day Rod, that's just a great play. That used We're to be kicking allowed. field goals now, and 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 Hamilton's got the football, you know, trying to put points on the board and go to the half. But now it's a challenge because the letter of the law says you can't put a finger on a quarterback these days. I'm with you, Dylan. But that's not the game we're playing. You didn't now. like it. Dylan doesn't like it. The fans don't like it. Orlando Steinauer didn't. He challenged. What of the challenge? After review, the ruling on the field stands. Oh yeah. <laughs> we're just we're not even halfway through, Rod, of the second game. We got two more of these the next three weeks. Argos, Tie Cats, round two, and this is where we're at right now. Oh boy, he's, he's jacked up now. They're fired up. Oh, I love it. It's getting angrier now. It's a 14 14 tie. Under a minute to go still in this first half. Okay. End zone look. Bethel Thompson, no. I don't think Brissett ever saw the football. Dejan Brissett, the intended receiver, and no. It just I don't think he ever saw the football. Far ahead of him. I, I, I think he was running his route and. I'm not sure if he ever located the football or knew it was coming his way. McLeod tries to lift it in the back corner of the end zone. They're 20 yards deep here, a lot of room to work with. Oh, yeah, he just couldn't get there. He saw it, just overthrown. Second and 10, huge play right here. Can they get a touchdown before halftime? This is second down. Hamilton 17, 41 on the clock. Shorter pass to Ambles. Gets it down to about the 13. And that'll set up a third down and Boris Beatty to come on. And the Argos are hoping now for a three-point lead at the half. And McLeod's got to get off of that. 
pressure came from the short side. He looked short side. Actually had more space and one-on-one -on -one opportunities to the field, but he stayed short side, got locked in to the ball, and his easy uh, play in front, come up and tackle for Hamilton. Third field goal try for Beatty. He's two for two. Haggerty will put it down just beyond the 19 to give the Argos the lead again. Flags falling as the ball falls as it went through the uprights again. Oh, so no. oh, wait no. for it. And it was third down and about six yards to go. And I can see is this Javon going Santo against Santo Knox is not happy. He's feeling like it's going against his football team. Hamilton number 11 pyramid. Oh man, that's the distance. First down. It'll be a first down. So Cameron Kelly ruled to the pyramiding, jumping up on a teammate to see if they could block the kick. I don't see Cam in the picture. I'm sure he, there he is. Well, he just jumped up. Jumped up in some Argos. Yeah, he just jumped up, and it was Calver, Brandon Calver, from Wilfrid Laurier. Who just kind of caught him in the air. He was just using his athletic ability, and Culver just stood up and he caught his knee into his shoulder pass. And I, I, I don't see Pyramid in there, right? That's when you use your own player to launch yourself high. He just jumped up, and the defender caught him. What a bizarre ending to this half. Still going Argos. A look into the end zone. Touchdown, Toronto. Well, Devaris Daniels. That's, that's huge for Toronto, but if I'm a tie catch fan, <laughs> I'm going to the concession stand, grabbing a couple, and pounding them because I'm not happy. This is just a drive that wouldn't stop. So many penalties, weird plays, and it ends with this. <laughs> Devaris Daniels, just the second touchdown of the year. 28th of his career. The last time the Argos played here, it was Thanksgiving Monday last year, and Daniels got the winning touchdown. Toronto came back in that game, or got the go-ahead touchdown at the time, and Beattie won it with a field goal. But Daniels has fond memories of playing here at Tim Hortons Field, capping off a seven-play drive that just seemed to take a whole lot longer than that. Yeah, it did. Just kept going, so Beattie does get a kick. Not a field goal, but a point after. And he's good. And so 12 seconds after all of this, 12 seconds to go till halftime, and the Argos do have the lead, 21-14. A frustrating last few minutes, especially for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And Cameron Kelly called for pyramiding, which took away a field goal try and gave the Argos a first and goal. Yeah, the, the rule simply says that you can't use your teammate or an opponent to get yourself higher. And you watch, you watch right here. Camp jumps. He's already in the air. And he gets blocked. I don't think he's trying to launch himself off of Calvert. Calvert just kind of caught him and he goes straight down. And he, I don't agree with that call. He jumped. Yes. He, he didn't step on an no, opponent he to didn't jump use higher. Him or, or, yeah. He, did, he didn't do that, but regardless, that drive finally ends in a touchdown. And Lawrence Woods to take it out, and he is taken down. Woods gets it out to the 20, so seven seconds to go. Bottom line is this. Daniels does get the touchdown his second this season. And the Argos get the seven-point lead. Tavares Daniels, six-year player from Notre Dame. Just, uh, I mean, he starts catching fire. Speedy B starts catching fire. We get Cam Phillips back. Kenton starts doing his thing on a consistent basis. See what Harris is about. Now, Toronto's got a lot of weapons. Definitely a lot of weapons to work with. I look at the roster rod and I see potential, great cup potential just with the town alone. And that's Andrew Harris leaving early. Cam Phillips not being able to play. And on the Daniels touchdown and a bizarre ending to the first half, Argos lead by seven. Let's go back to Kate.
Halftime of this Friday night are in Hamilton. The Argos are leading the Ticats by a touchdown. Here's Matthew Shinetti now with Hamilton receiver Stephen Dunbar. Stephen, uh, needless to say, that was an eventful way to end a half. What was the messaging in the locker room knowing the emotions were starting to rise a little bit? Uh, just we beating ourselves, man. We're making a lot of costly mistakes. That's causing us to put us in bad positions. So eventually, the message was just stop beating ourselves, man. Stop playing clean of football. And just execute our job, and I think we'll come out on the right side of it. What do you think when you take a look at executing your jobs? Everyone doing their 112th on offense. How do you build momentum? Uh, just stacking plays together, just not getting behind the chains. Like I said, making stupid penalties and hurting ourselves. If we stay in front of the chains, it's just stay, 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 find a rhythm on offense and do what we got to do on defense. Like I said, we'll find, we'll find a way to win. Appreciate this, yes sir. Dunbar, three catches, leading receiver for Hamilton in yards. But yes, Orlando Steinauer's team has some work to do now as the second half gets underway. And it's the Argos who will have the ball first. They had deferred to take it here. On the return, it's Curly Gittins. Gets up near the 40 and across. And a good place to start for McLeod, Bethel, Thompson, Matty. What a way to end that first half. It was crazy for the Argos. The P.I. helped. Yeah, and quickly Ryan did what he saw the challenge flag here. You can't staple and put your total body weight on the quarterback. That's an easy one for the officials. We got pyramiding, which we didn't see up here. And uh, then they capitalized. DeVars Daniels is in the end zone. That's, uh, you know, it's a tough way to end a half if you're Hamilton Tiger Cat. And if you're a Toronto Argonaut, it's like, heck yeah, we got the ball in the second half. Let's roll. So Craig Butler, the special teams coordinator of Hamilton, objecting. That pyramiding call. So it starts in the hands of A.J. Willette. Javon Santos knocks the middle linebacker in on the tackle. Willette, their feature running back now that Andrew Harris, in case you missed it, left with an injury to the right side. And he better not show any signs of wear and tear here. He, no, ain't nobody. Don't look over your shoulder. Don't the, put it on Declan Cross. I know Declan Cross would love that opportunity. Well, they do also have the rookie, Dan Adebayo. That's right. Kid from Bryant University. Well, I'll tell you what, you're looking to give Torsten and Mount. He got an opportunity to get all the touches here in the second half. Some pressure coming. Bethel Thompson gets it away. The coverage is there by roll on Brandon Banks. You see, I think it's, t it's, t it's tough to get a throw behind with Brandon Banks because he's so small and he can get bodied by the defender like you see here. And, and you know, I think Roll just simply just stand there and Speedy B's not going to go high point it because he's so small. I, I, and it's over the top or underneath stuff that you got to get with Speedy B. And again, you see the, the Cloud Bethel Thompson and the star acquisition in the offseason not on the same page. Banks still without a catch in this game. A big return by Lawrence Woods again, who does get pushed out of bounds. He had a 47 yard return that helped set up the Ticats for a field goal in the first half. And another one there to give Matthew Schiltz a better place to start. Yeah, Rodney comes into this game second in the CFL in combined yards, just a few behind Jamal Morris from Saskatchewan, who does it all for the Riders. This guy continues to impress, man. 13.8 yard average in the CFL. He's adding to that tonight. That's number one in the league. He's adding that to, he's adding the total. Excuse me, he's adding to that total tonight. We have a quarterback change for Hamilton, too. Matthew Schultz went 11 for 15 for 92 yards, no touchdowns and a pick, giving way to Jamie Newman to start this second half. Newman, first reps as a quarterback, other than the short yardage for the touchdown, which he had earlier, and handing off the Don Jackson. So Matthew Schultz, have a look at him there, who started this game, his first start for the Tie Cats. This season after the injury to Dane Evans last week. Yeah, he's got I mean those aren't coaches around him. Those are that's medical staff and uh, That's that's got to be bothersome to uh, Tommy Condell offensive coordinator and the Hamilton Tire Cats coaches when Newman's had limited time To get reps during practice because you know Schiltz has taken all those so thrown into the action and taking off and running is Jamie Newman. <laughs> Josh Haggerty in there. Argo safety. <laughs> and a first down on the ground for the Ticats. You want some more. You want some more. You just, you 
This is straight up. Ice out. Let's go. Get you some. Don. McManus just kind of bounced off of Don Jackson's attempt and block, and Newman was already past him and came back. And Newman wanted some more. McManus, I love it. Young quarterback. Wake Forest said, hello, CFL. Hello, Newman. <laughs> I had to. I just had to. I teach you right. You don't hit that one, man. Something's wrong. <laughs> And he hands off again, so keeping it on the ground, Newman saying hello to the CFL as they say hello to him. And uh, gain a six yards there. But Newman has two touchdowns, short yardage. He has not, as of yet, thrown a pass in his young CFL career. And remember David Watford last year, Matty? Yeah. After injuries to Jeremiah Masoli and Dane Evans. That's right. Got a few starts. He won two of his three starts. Yeah, and played things very close to the vest. High percentage throws, play action, hit back out of flat, never really pushed the ball down the field, didn't turn it over, and won football games. And taking off again, so they just calls his number, and he needed about three yards, and it looks like he has it, or very close to it. Yes, indeed. First down, Ty Cats on the ground. Yeah, he's, he, he, is, uh, he is a big boy from Wake Forest. 6'4", 230, and this is all design. Just follow some big bodies. Well, that's a nice job of the big boys up front, getting it done, pushing them, rooting, rooting them out of the way. Jamie Newman thrust into the action here with an injury to Matthew Schultz, who got the start because of an injury to Dane Evans. Yeah, he looking like he's going to throw this one, yelling at his receivers. First and 10 and a 37. It'll play fake, and here we go. CFL patch number one is complete. The Don Jackson down at the 35. He is escorted out there by Jamal Peters. But just to call the play and, and to get the people in the right position and then go through the motions and actually complete the pass, I mean, it's a big deal. That's a big deal for a guy that didn't have a lot of reps and verbalize, just verbalizing plays. Tommy Condell, offense coordinator, got his job cut out for him the rest of the way here right now, trying to get this guy Locked and loaded and, and productive and doing a nice job of keeping it on the ground there. Second and eight, see what he's got. So first pass, the short one is complete. Lower body injury to Matthew Schiltz. We'll keep you posted, but gone to the dressing room to get more attention on that second down and long. And he does take off facing the heat. And pushes his way down inside the 30. It'll be a third down. It will be short, but certainly in field goal range now. You know, our longtime producer, John Hines, is in my ear right now saying that that was me during my rookie training camp at, in Edmonton. Just drop back, have no idea what I'm looking at, pull it down and make something happen. And Does, does and that ring a bell with you? What was, he's not wrong. Yeah. He's not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I took, like I always say, people know. Uh, I take shots at myself. It took me about eight years to figure out how to read a defense. You did okay, Mr. Hall yeah, of Famer. I, I'm you, just saying that. Yeah, uh, takes time, right? Those were design runs by Newman there and Dami Condell. And put himself in a field goal situation here. Seth, see what he's got. Katie Texas product from Texas A&M's, nine of 10 on the year. And his longest came in the first half from 43. He puts that one through as well. So having a perfect night, three on the board, cutting into that Argo lead. Hamilton now trailing by four. That music takes me right back to the 90s. 25 years of Friday Night Football and our favorite game show, Maddie. Friday night football trivia. Who won the first Argos Ticats Friday night football game? We got a 50 50 chance, don't you? You do. So you <laughs> think about that now. Little play fake to AJ Willette now. Bethel Thompson. Deep ball nearly intercepted by Cameron Kelly. Covering Tavares Daniels. That close to a pick. Yeah, he drops back and uh, he, he is the man deep. Tunde Adeleke is covering a man out of the backfield. And Kelly is over the top. All over DeBarris Daniels almost one hands it for his fourth interception of the season. 
ball had to have been perfectly placed, a little overthrown, and Kelly was Johnny on the spot. That closed interception number four in the season. The Argos are four for 12 in the night on second down conversions. Got a second and 10 here from their 40, leading only by four now. Oh, wow. Getting it away, wide open receiver, and look who it is, the former cat. Brandon Banks getting his first catch had the P.I. called on one when he was attended receiver. Yeah, that he, one a gain of 14. Yeah, Rod nearly in a rush four here and McLeod's got a nice pocket to work in and Speedy B sits down on the zone a little curl route and he dots him and moves the sticks. He and Bethel Thompson in sync on that play and a first down. The most outstanding player in the CFL in 2019 is a member of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Brandon Banks play fake off to the right ambles and shy of midfield next to nothing maybe nothing at all for the Argos on that play second down. I Tunde delicate does a great job of reading this watch him right here coming downhill he's reading the mail of Toronto Argonauts and no way are they getting this off. He just undercuts everything is right there and takes animals down for a loss or no gain on the play. The Argos converted that last second and long. They have another one here from their 54. Bethel Thompson. <laughs> oh, Daniels comes oh, back, turns man. around, gets more. Devaris Daniels. Great work after the catch as the Argos are in business now. Another first down in the Hamilton zone. Did he know what he was doing as you making that up on the fly? That was a beautiful throw, first and foremost. Watch this. You see the tail end of this. Ball's beautifully thrown. Right in front of Simone Lawrence makes him miss. Nice move that <laughs> makes him miss. And he almost outruns Cario Brooks for an angle. Tunde there to force him out of bounds. Nice play by DeVaris Daniels. Gain of 23 to get it down to the 33 of the Cats. And Lawrence, you saw him on that play and has taken a knee. You got to think you don't want to trade field goals here. Certainly Hamilton had to settle for one on that drive with Newman. If I'm Toronto I'm thinking we get the ball in the end zone somehow here we take control of this football game. And Simone Lawrence who missed a month just came back a couple of weeks ago. And injured again. Helped off the field. That is just likes his legs go right. Oh, oh no. Non-contact injury as he favors his leg. Back to live action now. I could be, a number, could be a number of things there, Rod. That's scary to watch. Well, the Tie Cats. I mean, every team has, but the Tie Cats have certainly had their share of injury concern, especially lately. Braylon Addison last week lost for the season, and two quarterbacks now out, and Simone Lawrence getting attention. Yeah, I was saying Braylon Addison was becoming. Nick Dembski for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, just a guy that was doing everything for him. And Brandon, I hope you're feeling better. Get, Absolutely. get well soon. Yeah, devastating. He had three catches, 52 yards before he got hurt last week in the first half. Bethel Thompson. And it's complete to Curly Gittens. Takes it down at the 15. Gittens with the catch. Finally, his first one of the night. He's the leading receiver of the Argos coming into this game. Yeah, I, th I think the most definitive throw. Of McLeod Bethel Thompson tonight with Kelly in his face just throws a dart to Gittins. Tough catch over the middle with Evans in his hip pocket. Big time first down right there. Since I mentioned the Argo struggles in second down, they've gone three for three. The second down in this drive. First and ten now, Hamilton 15. Willette with it. Julian Hauser has him all tied up for a loss of a couple of yards. Yeah, we're talking about Curly Gittins who's coming into zone this year. Another player from where, Rod? Wilfred Laurier That's University. That's right. I'm telling you, they love their Wilfred Lauriers. And Curly Gittins, the top Canadian receivers this year, and he's adding to that here. Yeah, Wolitarski's starting to come into his zone. Devonka Toy's kind of settled down. Nate Bahar is a second down conversion expert. This guy play can the, do it all, Rod. Eighth play, Matty, of this drive. Longest of the night. It's second and 11. Bethel Thompson, no. Wanted Banks. Evans was there. Falls incomplete. 
And it's third down and the field goal unit is coming out. Uh, you know when you're starting running back for a football team at the professional level you're going to have to come in and you have to do some blocking too. It's exactly what A.J. does here. Well that does his job. He's found a tough sledding since coming in for Andrew Harris on the run after that big long gainer his first touch but ever since then he's been kind of shut down the run game but big time block there to let his quarterback have an opportunity downfield. Boris Beatty the kicker John Haggerty the holder they have a new long snapper for this game Maxime Latour and everything seems to go just fine as they put it through and restore their seven point lead with Jake Reinhardt injured and out. The tour comes in. <laughs> Important thing. Long snapping. They get that field goal. Argos by seven. Friday night football trivia was as Matt Dunnigan said he had a 50 50 crack at it here. <laughs> Who won the first Argos tie catch Friday night football game, Matty? Yeah, I'm going with Danny Mack. I'm all in on Mack. Danny Mack. October 23rd, 1998. The tie cats went to the Grey Cup that year and they destroyed the Argos 45 8. The Argos. Were the two-time defending champs, but they had a lot of change, including Doug Flutie heading off to Buffalo. It was only fair to get Danny Mack in there because we shot him, shot him throwing a pick. Absolutely. To Adrian well. Smith. The tug at, and, and, uh, yeah, you're right. We did from back in his Edmonton days in '96, but yeah. what a quarterback he was too, and an old so, teammate of yours. Yeah, that guy. I mean, just a gun. He's all about gunslinger. It's unbelievable. That was, so that's unbelievable. That's Gerald Vaughn with the interception there on Kerwin Bell. Yeah. And that uh, was O'Shea chasing him 56. Yeah, so and then more here. Mike, Mike Morielli. Yeah, look at that. And that was Ron Lancaster, the head coach of that team in 98. They went to the Grey Cup in Winnipeg and lost to the Calgary Stampeders. And the two met again the next year, and Hamilton did win it the last time they won the Cup. Great team, and they did win the first meeting with the Argos on a Friday night in TSN. Jamie Newman, the quarterback for Hamilton, looking to throw it deep. Goes to the natural instincts of running, which he does well, but nowhere really to run there on that second down play. And with that, a two and out for the Tie Cats under Newman, and they'll have to punt it away. Enoch Mwamba is all over that. And uh, I think he's got a beat on that young man's resume. Rookie. Can't read a defense. It's going to pull it down and run a lot. Well, the Tie Cats up against it with the rookie QB. Third stringer pressure's coming. They got close. A flag comes out too as Brandon Banks has it in his hands at the 30. But will Hamilton's possession continue now? With a roughing the kicker call. Flag coming out. Yeah, they had a block on and uh, they didn't get it. And momentum took him into. Domagala and uh, major foul roughing the kicker Toronto number 25 15 yard penalty automatic first down Eli Metzer is called they brought the heat they were very close to blocking it yeah Eli's going to come right up the middle too and uh, they had success last week turn the game around and there you can see him taking out his plant leg and that's a no no last so, week Matty, you talked about it. Trevor Hoyt with the block and Adama Gala punt. And Benoit Mario is not in the lineup tonight. Scooped it up, took it in for the touchdown that helped absolutely. the Argos win. Yeah, and it, absolutely. Game changer right there. So the penalty keeps the drive going. Newman across midfield calls his number. He's done a lot of that since getting into the game. Enoch Mwamba there for him again as he picks up a couple of yards. Talked to Mickey Donovan before the ball game, their special teams coordinator, and, and uh, I congratulate him. He says, "Oh yeah, the guys did a great job." I said, "I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to the guys. You know, hey, tip of the cap, man. You work a long time to find little cracks in the crevices and something to attack, and you found it, and you puppeteered your guys to a game-changing play. Good on you." There's there's Mickey, special teams coordinator, but yeah, yeah Trevor Hoyt. Graduate of the Carlton Ravens, and it was a Ravens punter, Michael Domagala, at that punt block. Here we go. He gets it away, completes it across the 50, so a short who's, gain. Who's there? And, who's, yeah. to, who's tossing around back th back in the backfield like he's nothing? Enoch Mwamba. Enoch coming in McManus. again. McManus. 
Told you, if you just watch Enoch McManus, they're going to get after and you're going to have a good time. He's coming right here. He's going to force the issue. Don Jackson didn't want any part of him. He said, no. Ole, 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 ole. With McManus. And now it's Brandon Banks. The punt return and nowhere to go. As he's out of bounds inside the 10. McLeod Bethel Thompson, the Argo offense, back in the field on what's been a beautiful night here at Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton. Back after this on Friday Night Football. The Ticats have had a lot of bad news in the injury front, and this wasn't looking good either. Simone Lawrence, you see on that play, non contact injury and covering Devaris Daniels. and needed help getting off the field and you wonder Jesus it happening again to the tie catch but Simone Lawrence after that is back in this game Matty. yeah tough ball player and it looked like he grabbed his hand in the back of his leg after that injury and hopefully it's just a tweak or he'll be fine but he's out there in his 10th year and just about his entire career Spent with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, their all time leading tackler. Saw a couple of young lads coming up the elevator. I was coming up to the box earlier today. And they had 21 jerseys on, new gray look. Not gray. On the second and six, it's to Daniels. That was after a four yard carry by A.J. Willette. Daniels gets it and enough for the first down across the 20 for the Argos. Yeah. Coming right at you. Clouds view, plants his leg. Timing route. Nothing Leonard could do about that. Just Daniels. Make the tackle, right? Yeah, he, he yeah. had the touchdown right at the end of the first half after a bizarre drive by the Argos, aided by a lot of penalties that gave them the lead that they have held since. By seven. Last play of the quarter, and Evans play. jumped in front of Brandon Banks. Another close call for Siante Evans, but good coverage there and his old teammate. Siante. Siante Evans. Wise old veteran back there covering a wise old veteran. Coming up with a big play. So that is three quarter time. The Argos led by a touchdown to start, and they still lead by seven here on Friday Night Football. The story of the third quarter. Well, the Tie Cats, Matt, he still trailed Toronto by seven, but Matthew Schiltz was injured and didn't play at all. It was Jamie Newman who went uh, two for four for four yards. Yeah, and a tough spot for Jamie Newman coming in in a situation like that because you know that his reps were very sparse throughout the course of the week because Schiltz had to get all those to get up to speed. Then uh, suddenly you're in the lineup and yeah, Tommy Condell did the best he could with the young quarterback. He touched the ball several times on the ground and moved the sticks and got them in the field position to kick a field goal. Keep this thing tight. Now the defense got to do their job. Maybe a pick six here, tie this thing up. But I think Schultz will be back for the fourth quarter. And apologies, Jamie Newman. Two for two for four yards, but did more on the ground. It didn't lead them to a field goal drive. So it begins fourth quarter into the hands of Devaris Daniels, who wanted a flag, and he got one. Yeah, but who's it on? Is it on Carrie Brooks or DeVarks? Pass interference. Hamilton number 26. The yeah. penalty is declined. Result of the play is the first down. Well, he caught the ball, didn't need the penalty anyway. Yeah, DeVarks is really tough to the football. And as a quarterback, it's what you're looking for all the time. People are working hard back to it. It's your rock or nobody else's. It's your meal ticket, is what we used to always say. And Devaris Daniels is having him a nice little football game when production is sparse for the Toronto passing game right now. There's Willett. He's got a nice hole to work with. He does. A.J. Willett in for the injured Andrew Harris. Yeah, you know, A.J., he's a big body. You know, he goes about 220. 5'11", uh, about 220, and he's coming downhill. And Simone's thinking, I'm going to go low on this guy. And there's like 700 plus tackles right there, and didn't get that one. Kind of a speed bump. Sets up Willette again, or just a keeper here by McLeod Bethel Thompson on the Ooh, second and very short. Doesn't get much there. 
That did not look like McLeod's. He needs to go to sneak school. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck Climbing and I have had sneak school going for many years, and uh, I think he's our next uh, scholarship award winner. I seem to recall you and Jock in the studio for many years trying to sign people up for the sneak school. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, he'll, he'll learn from this. She's not pretty. She's got to get low. It might want to get your head up. Well, you know what? He didn't get enough. So it's third down and about a foot. And Haggerty is coming out. Ryan what? Dinwiddie taking no chances. This is a very short distance they need. And McLeod's not happy coming off the sidelines, giving his coach an earful, saying that he wants to go for it. Now he's hearing about it, but third and to say maybe a foot and a half Haggerty's coming on anyway they have the seven point lead they want to protect and they're just going to punt it away it's been that type of game though the punt units cover units has been a game of field position field goal kickers and uh, hats off to the special team coordinators and teams that are earning their money tonight Argos taking no chances with that touchdown lead into the hands of Lawrence Woods punt of 46 yards he's bouncing on tackles here goes Woods again Haggerty's chasing him again he gets around a fly Lawrence Woods nonetheless can make big things happen, but is this one coming back? The CFL's leading returner. Holding Hamilton number six. And they got Micah Johnson on the hold. It's coming back. Johnson watch number six right there to help spring Lawrence Woods loose on what was already a tremendous return nullified Hamilton ball but much further well Micah Johnson's getting his first taste to gone right here and it's and I don't see the hold there he's on Robbie Smith no rush for the weary you got a nine-year player Micah Johnson on special on return teams working his tail off downfield and gets flagged and takes one off the board for and Matthew Schultz comes back in his first action of the second half he missed the whole third quarter and hit there by Jamal Peters and there's Dylan Wynn and Micah Johnson going at it they're excited look at him they got, they're just talking it out. That's all they're doing. It's just a nice, simple conversation there between yeah. Dylan Wynn and Micah Johnson. Micah Johnson, 285 pounds, six foot two, nine year veteran from Kentucky, working his tail off this football game. So, on second down, that's up across. There they are. Right near midfield. Yeah, this conversation is still going on. Two angry tackles right now, but a couple of calls they don't agree with. And it's a first down on that completion for the Ticats. That's a whole lot of time right there spent in the weight room between those two guys. You bet. Dylan Wynn frustrated in the first half for roughing the passer call against him and uh -huh. upset as well on that holding call against Micah Johnson. Imagine the guy that you, you look up and you, your responsibility is number six on punt return. It's like, what? Me? Done. Dunbar had the catch for the first down, so they go back to the ground. Schultz back in this game. The ball carrier, Tim White. See him doing that. They're trying to trying to get something going. Mix it up a little bit. That's not bad. Get you half. Second and five, you can deal with that. Good to see Schultz back in there. And what has been his first start? He's been involved in the offense, both. As a quarterback mm -hmm. with Dane Evans out there using two QBs, Tommy Condell has been very creative with them both out there. He caught a pass from Evans and last a, week. A two quarterback system has been, uh, he drew him off size. Nice, nice long count there. And was it Jagera Davis of the Argos, who certainly knows this place well, a star here in the last yeah. couple of years for Hamilton? You know, I like it. You know, it's. Looking back at that County. game last night, down. Montreal was all over Zach Calera, sacked him five times, and uh, you know, 
anything you can do offensively as a quarterback. And Matthew Schiltz said he used long count. And, uh, you know, first sounds, long counts, a lot, of, a lot of times hurry up can get defenses off balance. And Ja'Garrett Davis got caught there. Well, actually, Matty, it's it's against the Ticats. Oh, Colderwood yeah. Manzi oh, gets called. Man. They called procedure. Fans didn't like that. So that puts him back to the original line of scrimmage back at the 50. So, no, what looked like early movement by the Argos saying they were drawn. Doesn't change the thought process. I'd be mixing it up here against this Argo D. Second down and 10. Deep look. Schiltz. What you got to do, you got to give your receiver a chance. And Tim White, and this is what Shields does he launches it, gives his re receiver an opportunity, and Tim breaks the tackles in the end zone. So, all that conversation between Dylan Wynn and Micah Johnson, they can get on the same page now and get his defensive stop because offense got in the end zone. Very close to tying this back up. Matthew Schultz comes back in at quarterback and leads a five play 70 yard drive. A 60 yard touchdown strike to Tim White. And the point after from Seth Small is through. Tim White, third touchdown of the season. Something to celebrate, too, because once again, we got a tie game. Fourth quarter, 24. 24. Yeah, Tim White right here. He's going to get down the football field and watch what he does when he gets to about 40 yard line. He's going to stick the post move for some reason, but the DB is still high and inside. So just keep going down the football field. Just keep going this way. You don't need to stick it and go this way right back into him. Quarterback should see that, but Tim White sticks it. Ball's a little underthrown. He makes a great play in the football and finds the end zone. Regardless of how, how how he ran that round, it worked out tremendously for the Ticats. And we got a brand new game because of it. Curly Gettins on the kick return. Flags coming out as Gettins is taken down right at the 40. Tim White. You know, during the return, holding Toronto number 44, 10 yard penalty. Hey, I tell you what, special teams have been a big factor in this football game throughout but I applaud these officials for doing what they're doing right now because like we've talked about this is just about halfway through this four game set between these two game two teams in five weeks and if you don't keep a close eye on them it could get ugly in a hurry and uh, yeah it's tough sometimes to see all these flags coming out but you got to police them because they will get off script in a heartbeat. Well, if they didn't know each other very well before this season, in a little less than two games, they know each other really well now. Tie game from the 28, Bethel Thompson. And that is that incomplete by the looks of things. Declan Cross, the intended receiver. No, are they ruling it a, a catch? Yes, they are. And McLeod Bethel Thompson got happy feet in there. Wasn't any pressure on him, but he just had all kinds of time. And he was looking around, looking around anticipating somebody coming off their block and nobody did and finally he just dumped it down and didn't set his feet and Declan had to make a surface catch for five yards right up across the Toronto 32 second down now pressure they got some heat coming but he has time to get it away near the first down marker Ooh, that's right at it or a little bit shy for curly Gittins. see where they spot the ball but he's about a football shy yeah, it's a crazy strong throw because he's late, right? This is not timing. He's, he's late. And once again, the punting unit is coming on. Very similar spot as before. This is this is third and like uh, half uh, of even, a even less. This would be about a foot. And 
Ryan Dinwiddie not taking any chances. Now, bear in mind the flip side of this, Wait a although minute. they're switching up again uh, now. Uh, change your mind. You're allowed. I was going to say, when you, when you manage risk, the last time they did this, Lawrence yeah. Woods took it to the house, but there was a penalty, but they were that close to getting burned. And then Wood Manzi took a procedure call, which backed him up, and then we and then we, and then Shields found White for a long touchdown. So Chad Kelly, the backup quarterback, who was a touchdown earlier in this game, is there. It is third and about a foot. Yeah. At, at least Ryan didn't when he's got Kelly out there. Because we saw that McLeod's still got time in sneak school. That previous set of downs, Bethel Thompson on a second down and a less than a yard. Couldn't get it. Got to have it here. And on the third and short, they punted. This time they're going for it. Inside their 40, Kelly. Oh, what's he right doing? Side. Going sideways. Cuts it up and does get it, though. Oh, oh, man. Matt Dunnigan didn't like it, oh, but it does goodness. end up in a first down at the 40 for the Argos as Bethel Thompson will man, come got, back in. I got my hands on my knees up here in the booth, man, going, whoa! He Did, going sideline to sideline. It's like, just go north-south, follow them big boys. Man. Hey, it worked, though. They wanted nothing to do with <laughs> Dylan Wynn or Micah Johnson in the middle. Said, no, we're going outside. Buffalo girls go out there, around the outside, around the outside. Buffalo area guy. That's what I'm talking there about. You go. Right? There you you go. Up again, You're brother. teeing me up first down. So Kelly's at Bethel Thompson back in. And that's A.J. Willette and picks up maybe a couple of yards. Tenth carry for Willette since coming in late in the first yeah. quarter for Andrew Harris. It has been tough sledding. He's had two big runs that broke. Everything else has been tackles for losses with no gains. It's been tough sledding for it. That run game, Toronto Argonauts. Yeah, Ice is going to be his friend after this game. Ten carries, 47 yards. There's Andrew Harris. Injury to his right side arm area. Leaving late in the first quarter. Second and nine. Argos at their 41. Off to the left. It's oh, complete. It's knocked out. Cariel Brooks on the coverage. And great it was in Devaris Daniels. Just didn't give up on it. Devaris has got his two big mitts on it. And Cariel's right there. And wouldn't let him secure the rock and pull it in close to him. And right there, he gets there and knocks it away. It's a big breakup right there. Which leads us to an obvious punting situation now for Haggerty and the Argos. Haggerty standing inside their 30. And Woods, ever dangerous, standing back at around his 12. What might have been, it was so close, a holding call on Micah Johnson. He'd already had it up to midfield on that return. He is a game breaker. And it looked like they had him on that last one. Found his way through. This time takes it at the 25. And on the short side, nowhere to run. Good coverage there. It's Joshua Haggerty, backup safety in there on teams for the tackle. Daniels thought he had it. Brooks thought otherwise. Incomplete. Tiger Cat ball. Tie game. I want for you to do something. Do something? Boy, you must not know my name. I've never pushed myself this far in my life, and it's paying off, man, let me tell you. Hey, we're about to get this back and go get a touchdown. Get it through your head. Hey, get it through your heads. We're about to go down and score, all right? CFL Wired Wednesday, 7 Eastern. How's that for a segue? Really? For the last possession for Matthew Schultz. That's incredible. That's the magic of John Hines and Don Landis. The last time they had it. They went down and scored a touchdown, and the heat is coming. Oh Wynton McManus <laughs> finishes off what Jagera Davis started. Now that pressure on Schultz, and down he goes for a loss. Yeah, if you're still watching 48, you got a big smile on your face. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, he's right here. He's going to come around the edge. He's going to start it here, and Winton's going to finish it. Get there. Follow him. It's a little trailer, and then just ragdoll him. That's just crazy. That's fun to watch. You don't have to just watch ball all the time. You pick a player out and just have a blast watching a game of football. Wynn McManus, amazing athlete, having a year for the Argonauts. He's, he's, he's pointing back at that nameplate. Remember that name.
Wow. But what about the play earlier by Jagera Davis when he went high on Bethel Thompson? There's a penalty on the play. So they are calling a penalty on this. Have another look, Matty. Yeah, Jagera Davis right here. He's going to get his hands up in the face of the right tackle, Kelly. Colin Kelly. Oh, no, it's face mask. There's a face mask on the quarterback, and then Winton's going to get a penalty. So just a face mask. Jagarek Davis, Rodney. We got early movement. The right tackle there is the aforementioned Colin Kelly. After they picked up 15 on the penalty Receiver. to get up to the 48. Hamilton number 69. Five yard penalty remains first down. So a couple of penalties. They moved ahead 15, and now they're going to move five yards back. Yeah, Kelly got a penalty there. A little procedure call. And so Jagarek Davis got his hands on the quarterback's face. They called that. I thought they might have called Wint McManus for ragdolling the quarterback there and just whipping and throwing him around like a sack of potatoes. Instead, the one call, and what looked initially like a sack of Bethel Thompson, and he's now facing a first and 15, or excuse me, Matthew Schultz for Hamilton, and throwing and completing across midfield, Keandre Smith near the first down, too. They needed 15 yards. Smith with his fourth catch. And a beautiful throw. Uh, has some pressure. And yeah, just gonna get up in here and sit down, and the ball's gonna be thrown with timing. Watch Schiltz rope this there. Rope it right behind his ear. Nice spot of football right there. Good, on, good on both ends. Offensive line got it done. Schiltz threw a strike, and Smith. Put him in second and short. Big package in now. Jamie, Jamie Newman in first down. And more for Newman. Still going <laughs> down to the 25 inside. Schiltz came back as the, the quarterback, but Newman still having an impact in this offense on a big carry of 29 yards on that second and short. And Jamie Newman's finding out things happen quickly down here. As he well knows when he runs the unit, he bobbled the snap there. Buffalo girls go around the outside again for the quarterbacks on these short yardage situations. And he's protecting his meal ticket right there as he's scooting down the football field. Huge first down for the Hamilton the Tiger Cats knocking on the door 24 24. They're down to the Argo 23. Big swing here. Hamilton on the ground. Still hey, Sean yes. Thomas Erlington. the first carry for Sean Thomas Erlington in this game and he takes it in for six and what did Matthew Schultz say in CFL wire we'll take this in Stay with us. We're going to take this in. They That's did exactly again. what they do. Watch these guys work right here. They're going to seal it here, and they're going to seal it out here. Everybody does their job. And then, boom, out the gate. Touchdown, Thomas Erlington. Point after. Seth Small. The Ticats trail. And so many times in the second half, they've had the lead, only to see it disappear. Opposite scenario taking place now. They were down seven. And with this carry by Sean Thomas Erlington, the Tiger Cats in the fourth quarter are up seven. Hey, Rod, you got Oakman here. He's got a stun on, but watch the big boys up front. Watch them work and get to second level. And Kelly's going to kick out, and STE's off to the races. Bob Oakman just kind of eliminates himself. Revenberg seals it. And look at that lane, baby. That is pay dirt right there. And STE's like big smile on his face. No chance for Amos. STE out legs into the end zone. Big time drive for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And the only touch of the game 
for Sean Thomas Erlington is just huge for the Cats right now. Curly Gittins on the return. And the coverage down the field is good with Stavros Katsantonis taking him down at the Argo 26. That's fun time right there. Yep. You know, Hamilton's running game's been in question a lot this season. And uh, a night where they <laughs> take the dual threat of two quarterbacks on the field trying to help out the run game. And they rely on Don Jackson. It's STE's had a big game. Then he throw a little, little Newman in there. A short yardage situation. Everybody's contributing for the Ticats' success on the ground. Look at the difference. Second half point differential. It's been a real problem this season. It's not a problem tonight. Under three minutes to go. Bethel Thompson. The Argos are down. Bethel Thompson is down. And it's Micah Johnson getting the job done. Yeoman's work right there, baby. No rest for the weary. Big man says, I don't need any rest. I'm going to get her done right here and just bull rush and get to you. Watch me. Watch how I work. Oh, drive him. Get off of me. Grab a piece and then get all of them and take him down. Nice and easy, nice and gentle. <laughs> a little love from Smoney. A little salute for his services. Second sack of the night, Johnson. The tide has really turned in the Ticats' favor. They set up the screen to win. And a good tackle there by Simone Lawrence. And Toronto's going to have to kick it away. Vintage Simone Lawrence coming up, reading the screen, and just takes his legs out from underneath him. Simone Lawrence, his entire career, has been able to read these plays. Big boys try to get out in front. Simone's going to undercut him and watch him out of nowhere. Woo. Like stealth going low. Down goes AJ. And the punt goes to Woods outside the 40. Good place to start and more. Midfield there inside goes. the 50. Lawrence Woods keeps that momentum swing going. Jack Kassar takes him down, but not until he gets to the Toronto 45. Another good night of returns for Lawrence Woods. And a big play there for the all-time leading tackler earlier, Simone Lawrence. Uh, it's just unbelievable this kid's knack for it. I mean, he's the league's combined yardage leader after tonight's performance. 25.5 yards per punt return. 13.8 going into the game. He's increased that. He's taken over the combined yardage lead. That's impressive. These guys are cut from a different mold. Terry Williams from Ottawa. This kid here, Jamal Morrow. Some of these returners in this league are just phenomenal. And just uh, channel if we can get him healthy, right? Out there in Montreal. Mario Alford. Ask. These guys are just all so lethal on teams and. All night long, Rod, I've been talking about special teams, and it's been it's just been amazing how they factored into this ball game. They really have. Yeah. Special teams were big last week, too, in the Argos' favor. But Simone Lawrence hey, up, talking about what's great up, defense, Dad? too. And what's remember, up, he left. Up, it didn't look like he'd be what's back up, when he says? left earlier, and he seems just fine. Talk about a huge defensive play for the Ticats here. Yeah, he reads it. McLeod lifts it. AJ turns around before he can gather his feet. Woof. Just Simone Lawrence knifing in there. <laughs> and we know Orlando Steinhauer has seen that a time or two. Well, that's just momentum there. Simone says, Give me the love. Give me the love. You deserve some right there. 2 1. Get off the field. Give your offense that ball back. Let them go create some more damage. Well, we have 2 11 on the clock. Hamilton has the ball and the seven point lead in great shape now. They can finish this off to get their third win of the season. It's the fullback on special teams. Declan Cross, the injured Argo, getting helped off the field. Gosh. And, um, but for Hamilton, losing last week in the first game of this four games and five against the Argos that much more pressure on the Ticats especially with Montreal Maddie winning in Winnipeg last night. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. You know all these games factoring in. 
Montreal slated next up. So the ball and the game really is in the Thai Cats' hands now. If they can just hang on in this possession, getting down to near two minutes. Still a one score game, mind you. The Argos could still come back, but Hamilton with a major momentum swing in the fourth quarter have everything going their way right now. Yeah, and Rod, uh, this is as an offensive lineman, you're just loving, relishing in the opportunity for Tommy Condell to call a running play. And let you go root it out and continue to eat the clock and put Seth into a position where he can tap a field goal and make it a two score game. And on a night when the Tie Cats have run a lot better than they have normally, Jamie Newman has been their leading rusher. And Newman he's close. is close to another first down. He's been about a yard and a half short. Yeah, he got it about the 39, 38. That had to get to the 37. Yeah, so Small's looking at what? About a 40, 45 yarder. His CFL high done earlier tonight is 43. We'd mentioned earlier a lot of his field goals just out of situation were short. He had missed one from 41 his longest try before tonight. And this one will be the longest yet at about the 46 yard line. Yeah. Where Matthew Schiltz will put it down to make it a two score game with under two minutes to play. Seth Small puts it up. Puts it through. Hamilton 140 in the clock. And the Tiger Cats are leading by 10. That's huge. Yeah. So one KD Texas product turns it over tomorrow to another one at Bo Levi Mitchell. I love the synergy here. What a fourth quarter for the Hamilton Tiger Cats and Matthew Schiltz. And you said it regarding the Tiger Cats schedule, most of which is against Ryan Dinwiddie's Argos. But they get to within two points of Toronto if they can get this win. And tied with Montreal. And next week, a reprieve from the Argos, Tie Cats, Alouettes, and Montreal. How big is that? Yeah, that's just. So this, you know, if you're complaining about the schedule, it's shaping up to pretty, pretty, pretty interesting right now. With Matthew Schultz going in to start against his old team? He can't write this stuff. He just writes itself. Fantastic. Great storylines here in the CFL. And coming out of this, depending, of course, how Dane Evans is. Schultz has acquitted himself very well tonight, 14 and 19, 176 for a touchdown and a pick, and he did miss the entire third quarter. But two touchdown drives here in the fourth quarter, and now that field goal, and it's 34-24. At one point, it was 24-17 Argo, 17 unanswered. Curly Gittins with the ball. 17 unanswered points by the Hamilton Tiger Cats. The fourth quarter was Hamilton's nemesis until tonight. What a yeah, difference. Yeah, in that second half period, you know, 20 to 3, they've outscored Toronto 17 0 here in the fourth. And uh, I, again, I'll say it, special teams, Craig Butler, you've had your boys rolling tonight. They've been outstanding and on point. Game of field position. Y'all take a full advantage of it. Couple penalties here and there, but man, it's gone a long way. First down. Targets with a lot of work to do now. Jamal Roll throws Gittens down. Just under a minute and a half. Talk about fired up special teams earlier too. Jared Richards, by the way, at the tackle on that. Kickoff return. There's Craig Butler, who is a, a great Tie Cats player and got into coaching and coordinates the special teams. And probably tough too after what happened last week yeah, in the block punt. Yeah, he had to eat that all week long, right? Mickey Donovan, you know, he's he's getting pat on the back all week long as he should, but well, he tipped the tuck. Second down, short. So that's a first down easily for the Argos, but the clock is against them now, 118. And they need a touchdown and a field goal in a very short period of time. So they.
Go in tempo, of course, yeah. trying to hurry up over the ball. Yeah, and, uh, and if things don't change in a hurry here for MBT, you know, his quirky stat of being 12 and 8 at home and 5 and 12 on the road is going to go to 5 and 13. It's a tough place to get a victory. I can always remember that no matter what team I was playing for coming into the Hamilton trying to win. That was always tough, Rod. Always and a tough And you route. knew this, you know the rivalry from both sides, but you knew it coming in with Toronto, didn't you? Ah, uh, man. My first five years in Edmonton, coming over here, uh, it was just, we would walk in and we would limp back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was tough. Tough yeah. games. Yeah. Old Iverwind Stadium, too. Here at Tim Hortons Field, by the way, the Argos, not since 2014, the Argos have only won twice here. And the second time was the last time they played here. You and I were at this game. Thanksgiving Monday last year when they won it on a Boris Beatty field goal. Yeah, yeah, it, and that doesn't happen very often. No. no. And what was that? 50, 50 51, 51 yards. yards. But for Orlando Steinauer, now in his third year as head coach, just a great unblemished record starting in 2019. And they were perfect at home. Bethel pressure. Thompson pressure. It's coming, taken down. That's Malik Carney with the sack. Back at the Argo 40. Yes, sir. I love that. That's a second. Go get some, North Carolina. Go get some. Yeah. You're right there. He's going to come around the outside one more time. Julian spin move, a little twist there with Dylan Wynn. McLeod thinks he's got the edge. Backside heat gets his. Gets his. On the second down and long, A.J. Willett takes it. Great move to get across midfield on a first down. He had a nice move in Simone Lawrence there. But under a minute to go, it's down to 50 seconds. Lewatt, who is Man, he's injured now, limping as he gets up. Yeah. This is open field tackling. Typically, calling card for Simone Lawrence. Lewatt says, nope. And he makes roll miss. Makes another man miss. Still going. Knocked out of bounds. Temporarily on the sidelines. And that falls incomplete. Brandon Banks, an emotional last couple of games for him. Two games against his old club. This is his first trip back. And not looking as memorable right now with his new team trailing his old one by 10 points. Yeah, really, everything was going well for Toronto. In the beginning of the third quarter, they finished out the first half with a penalty aided drive for a score, and then they got the ball back, and everything was heading in the direction, and then the script was flipped, and it's been all Hamilton ever since. Bethel Thompson, that kind of night, but he got it away to Dan Adebaboye. The rookie running back takes it. Picks up some yardage after that desperation toss by Bethel Thompson as he was being sacked. You gotta be creative here. We talked about top of the show. Found Bethel Thompson. He's got some creativity. You only got two downs to work with. You better figure out something. Give it to him. <laughs> Little over the head dumper. Throwing again now. <laughs> Off there to Curly Gittens. It is a first down, but there's 29 seconds to go. Yeah, we all know this is Yabs. Yards after beatdown. Academic at this point. Could be very misleading on the stat sheet. That's why sometimes those are hard to believe. I believe you are the creator of the Yab stat. I'll be John Pearlberg. You were John. Yeah. Flags out. Ambles with the ball. He's hit shy of the 20. 19 seconds. Might have been a collaborative effort. But I'll give it to Johnny P. We got some of the best in the business, man. We got him a Dave Moore. We got Johnny Russell. We got Johnny Pearlberg. We're you loaded bet. with talent over here. We're three Side. deep. Toronto number 16. We got Five Joey Stouts back in the studio. Repeat. We got Richardson back there too, help us all the time. These guys are phenomenal what they do. They, they ask for it and they have it. They really are, and they've helped us for years here and in the studio too, keeping us honest with the numbers and. The numbers right now are looking awfully good for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Winding down here at Tim Hortons Field. Academic at this point. 12 seconds on the clock. Brandon Banks with the catch. 
Just his second of this game. What a night here at Tim Hortons Field. Beautiful night for football. Podcast performed for their home fans. Looking into the end zone and caught out of bounds. It was intended for Gittins. Flag is out where Bethel Thompson was hit back in the Argo backfield. Two seconds on the clock. And Jamal Roll. Major foul roughing the passer. Slow to get up in the end zone. Hamilton number 96. Half the distance of the goal. Automatic. First down. We get one of the newcomers, Ronheen Bingham, defensive lineman. There's Bingham, who gets called for roughing the passer. Uh, he's stand up right here, and and uh, he's going to be late to the party. You can understand a little zealous. You know, he wants to get there. He lost his footing, and I think there lost his perspective on the play, and he was going 100 miles an hour. Tough to stop. Nevertheless, you would hate to see. McLeod get hurt on that. We got rolled down here. Two seconds on the clock. Jamal rolls. Plays. Yeah, it's just this is what you don't want to see as a coach. It's players, fans, guys going seamlessly down for really no reason. Yeah, they got they got to be thinking total points here because McLeod Bethel Thompson is going to come out there and. Kick three. It's four games. Yeah. It feels like one game, and we're we're almost at halftime now. Right. That's what I'm talking about. It's like, a, <laughs> it's like right. round two. It's just like you know it's we're just halfway there, boys. Late in the half, you'd kick a field goal, wouldn't you? You'd try to add to your point total. Of course, who knows how that point total will matter. And that's a good that's a good perspective yeah. to look at. It. You know, you have to look at it, step back, and look at it a hole like that. And that's why you see this happening right now. I, and Roll looks really, really like he's struggling down. Uh, you know, have any? It looks like he needs help there. Yeah, it, it, in so many ways, a great night for the Tie Cats. But just to see these injuries too, all these concerns as Roll limps off. That's tough to see. Mark Washington, Orlando Steinauer, one of their great defenders, heads off. But yeah, big victory in the absence of Dane Evans. Kudos to uh, coaching staff for finding a way to get it done. Nice job for them. Tommy Condell finding ways to make that offensive running game work so well. Tough win. So I'll play along with the point total. It was 34 20 last week, there Toronto. Yep. So 14 points. So they're already still ahead in terms of total points. We're just having fun right now. We just, they're, they're playing, as I say, like one game. So that makes it a seven point game. And zeros on the clock. Their first two games here this season, they had leads in the fourth quarter and they couldn't hang on against Calgary and Edmonton. This time the Tie Cats trailed by seven heading into the fourth quarter and they came back and they won it. So the four game series is all tied now. Round two goes to the black and gold of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Good fun, Rod. Look forward to the next two rounds. They're fantastic. coming. These guys know each other well. In, in two weeks' time, and then again Labor Day Monday, they'll do it again. Rivalry alive and well. Two more games coming up in Alberta tomorrow and a doubleheader Saturday in the CFL on TSN. Thank you for watching. Tonight in Hamilton, Ticats win. Sports Center is next.